Are we live? I think we might be. Hello, everyone. I don't know where the actual... Where's the... Oh, there we go. There's the, there's the camera over there. So, good evening and welcome to this evening's Painted Dog TV live chat. My name is Scott and it's great to be here. I am alone for now and waiting for Brent to get back. He's just actually been on a safari this evening, taking some people around Leadwood. So looking forward to hearing how his evening was. Hello, Michelle. Good to have you along with us. And it's been a productive day for me. I've been getting my second rig ready for the, my next uh, kind of venture as I expand my little business uh, between the and beyond camps. So my next camp that I'm going to is called Ngala which is nearby to where Brent lives. Oh, there's lots of people logging in. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Lily. Hello, Sparta. Barbara. Way, this is so awesome. So many familiar names that I actually haven't seen or heard of for so long. And to all of those of you who haven't met me yet, I used to work with Brent and VM at Safari Live. VM's over there tending to the fire and making sure everything works. We're having a bit of trouble with the fire. And that is because we've had some really wonderful rain over the last two days, which has been much needed. Um, so yeah, really good rain, about probably only about six mils, so not a huge amount. Other parts of South Africa have been having hugely heavy rain. Um, an area in our, well, my, my hometown and also kind of Brent's hometown where he lived in Durban, uh, had a massive tornado, which doesn't happen often in South Africa. So. Yeah, that happened yesterday, I think. Um, so yeah, lots going on weather-wise. The whole country is kind of experiencing rain at the moment, which is great. Well, some areas are getting rain, some areas are getting fire warnings. Anyway, I don't know why I'm rambling on about the weather so much, but there we go. There's the update for the weather this evening. Yes, Lady Bird, it is incredible. If you search for, not now, but where was the area? Albert Falls. Albert Falls in South Africa, tornado. You'll, you'll see some footage and it's incredible because like I say, it's very uncommon for us to have tornadoes or cyclones or hurricanes, whatever you want to call them, out here in South Africa. Kev Kenyon, you would like to know what have I been up to since I left Safari Live? It's a good question. I've been trying to work out what to do next with my life and about eight months ago, I uh, joined uh, up with Anne Beyond, who are a wonderful safari company who have camps all over Africa, India and South America. And the plan is for me to provide them with very similar to technology that you guys had the privilege of being exposed to with Safari Live. Um, I'm providing it to guests that are actually on the vehicle. So I've got three monitors rigged up to the camera. And what that means is each guest has a monitor. Each row of guests can look forward onto a monitor and then therefore don't need binoculars to look at birds closely because the cameraman brings them right up close to the birds. And our camera is about twice as powerful as your average set of binoculars. So quite handy that guests don't need to worry about binoculars. A lot of guests actually don't know how to use binoculars. It's quite difficult actually to get the hang of finding an animal with binoculars. So yeah, um, obviously the infrared camera also has huge capabilities or, or advantages of being allowing guests to be able to follow predators hunting after dark if they are uh, doing that. So that's my current little business plan that I've been up to for the last eight months. But it's been just about a year, just over a year since I left Safari Live. So the first four months I was kind of plotting what to do. I almost got into private guiding but then decided against it. So. Oh, I forgot about the mic, so sorry about whacking it over there, everyone. You can see I've been out of the game for a while. Marianne, thank you so much for saying it's such an awesome project. And yeah, it really is uh, taking off slowly, but all the guests that have experienced it have loved it. So super stoked about that. Um, I've got currently operating at Pinda, which is a beautiful reserve where Brent actually lived for about four years um, when he was about 10 or 11, I think um down in KwaZulu Natal. So we've got one rig operational there and I'm going to get the second rig operating here at Angala just for the time being and then hopefully take it up to one of the East African and beyond camps. VM, did I just hear Brent get back or am I dreaming? I don't think so. Brent's driving in a Land Rover so we'll definitely hear it chunking along in. Not seeing, just hearing. Sorry about that. Whoever's having the problems there. And thank you very much to everyone who's wishing me good luck.
Okay, shame. Sorry to hear that you're at, a, at work, Alicia. <laughs> anyway, hopefully your day is over soon. Anyway, that's kind of what I've been up to for the last eight months. The last week or so, or two weeks that I've been here in Hootspreet has been magical. Spent a few nights out with Brent and Viam on the Badger, which is such a cool little vehicle that can go anywhere. And yeah, we had some cool sightings on Leadwood and just great to spend time with both Brent and Viam again. Viam has been helping me out a whole bunch with all of the wiring and technical side of rigging up my second rig as he was uh, very much included in, in building the first rig about a year ago. So VM's an absolute ninja when it comes to technology and making things happen. I guess you guys are, are, are test well you know you get to see that with all the live cams that are getting set up by him. So really cool to see them doing that and was out yesterday with Brent and VM at Boskamp and Lucky. The four of us were all working away and yeah things are really going well with painted dog tv and their live cam so it's really excited and happy for them that they're doing well okay now i'm not very good at this oh this is how i bring the comments back a tool no sadly i've never been on safari in india nor seen obviously wild tigers and it's definitely something that i'd love to do and as i mentioned earlier and beyond do have camps in india so hopefully i will be able to get one of my rigs operating out there which will be great fun okay oh uh, tony thank you wizard william well done vm um okay have you seen a snow leopard before alicia no i haven't seen a snow leopard nor a jaguar nor a tiger so those are things that I would really love to do. Barbara, how many countries do you do safaris in? In terms of my little company, um, just South Africa for now, but hopefully we're going to expand to East Africa, both Kenya and Tanzania. Botswana, there's scope for some, some rigs there, possibly even Namibia. They've got an incredible camp at Sosses Flay. And then who knows, in time, maybe they'll secure an area where there's, oh, sorry, I'll keep forgetting about the mic, which is on my chest over there. And I keep walloping it. Do you plan on doing live safaris on YouTube? For now, it's very, very difficult to do live safaris. I'm sure it's going to become uh, easier. Um, and I would love to be able to share magical moments with you guys live. I really do miss it a lot. But for now, it's just really difficult. And it's not really what my company's focus is on. My goal is to really enhance guests' actual safari experience while they are out here by providing them with closer up visuals during the day and unique visuals at night with the infrared and the bonus of that is that we cut together a cool video of the whole experience like about a two to three minute video do you have a website for the rigs white rhino cbo no but chat with brent and vm if you would like one because vm is the man to build them so maybe they'll be able to organize you one but for now, um, again, I'm focusing all my attention on and beyond and their camps. How will people be able to take photos with these camera monitors? Uh, that's from Noel. People have just been taking photos of the monitors with their phones. Obviously, that's not ideal. We could take screenshots from the, from the film and provide that to the guests. But... At the moment, just editing the video for them occupies quite a lot of time. So we're keeping it simple for now. And yeah, they get a very cool video. So no stills for now, but a really epic video of the adventure. Yes, love my Charlie Faith. Uh, we certainly have been having lots of fun. Fear not, work hard, play hard. Oh, Julie, you're staying at Pinder in March. So that's super cool. Um, and just to cl clarify, I, I don't drive anymore. I'm a cameraman now. So I sit in the passenger seat next to the, the and beyond guides and I'm operating the camera. So I'm not the guide anymore. I'm the cameraman um, as I go from camp to camp. But then I find cameramen to operate those rigs. So currently there's a guy called Warwick uh, who's operating the rig at Pinda. And there's two guys that relieve him when he needs a break. So... Yeah, that's that. But Julie, it would be wonderful to be able to take you on a drive or maybe even two or three drives when you get to Pinda. Okay, updates on the fire. We've got a few more flames. Well done, VM. 
Okay, what's going on? What is your favorite big cat? It depends on the day, Misty Stokes. Um, I've really been missing leopard a lot. Um, at Pinder, they do have leopard, and quite a few of them are slowly becoming habituated, but it's only in the recent four or five year, last four or five years that they've managed to start winning some leopards over. But great cheetah and lion viewing there, so definitely missing the leopards of the sands. But in terms of a favorite, oof, it's difficult. A hunting cat is my favorite cat, I guess. <laughs> Julie L, very happy to hear that you're looking forward to your adventure with us. Oh, cool. Just saw Tingana and Kuchava on drive. A little update from Safari Live. That's a wonderful update. Sounds like the leopard sightings have been insane recently, which is really cool. Let's hope that keeps going on. Linda from California, you'd like to know if my videos will get longer. Um, for the guests, if they book us for their entire stay, so if they're there for three nights and we do six drives for them, every drive, then yes, the video will be longer. But for now, our guests are generally just booking us for one drive. And then it's just a two to three minute video. And yes, Noah, of course, I am mis missing the musketeers. Jeez, that was probably... Whew, that was an incredible, incredible three or four months of my life. As I rejoined Safari Live after having been away from a year, had two weeks before the TV series started, had to kind of get back into the swing of things, and then through absolute stroke of luck, I managed to actually be lucky enough to be the one that ended up following those musketeers. And as you know, they delivered the goods. And I also missed the full nights out in the Mara. They... It's the ultimate loophole to be able to sleep on the roof of one of those vehicles whilst you're following animals with all the toys on board. Ah, oh, it was absolutely magical. My arm is getting quite sore holding this. I don't know how Brent does it. He does have a longer wingspan than me. And he's spotted. Do you see animals we don't see at Juma? At Pinda, yes, there's a bunch of unique animals there. The red diker, Sunni. They've got a Tonga red squirrel there that I've yet to see, but that's a cool one. Uh, quite a few... Um, Elephant trues, four-toed elephant trues. Mm, what other animals are unique to there? They're reintroducing pangolin there, which is super cool. A really very cool initiative. So all the pangolin that are getting caught illegally being smuggled uh, that need to be reintroduced to a safe wild area are being reintroduced to Pinda. But that's a very kind of new initiative. Yeah. But really do miss the Mara and the Musketeers. And like I said, those full nights out. I worked out the other day, I've spent over about 80 full nights out in the Masai Mara following big cats or attempting to with a cameraman and one of the park rangers. We had so much fun. Oh, it was epic. So I miss that dearly. And who knows, one day hopefully I'll be back with my current company. It could provide us with opportunities to be doing night drives in areas like that in the future. So that is something I would love to be doing. And again, for now, not sadly not being able to share it live with people, but at least being able to provide guests that are actually on safari with the technology to kind of make the most of what's going on around them. Chris, has anyone heard from Brian J. The Thumb? Yes. Uh, I haven't personally kept, kept in touch with him, but I've been asking uh, Brent and VM who do keep more in touch with him. And yeah, he seems to be doing well. So he's doing his thing, I think, in Johannesburg. I must actually make a plan to reach out with him. Misty Stokes, how do you keep the genetics in a closed system at Pinder? You take off animals and you bring on new animals. So it's obviously not easy, but they keep track of you know when they need to bring in new bloodlines and they swap males with different reserves so it's an incredible undertaking uh, in, in order to be able to manage a closed reserve like that because they've got black rhino white rhino the big five they just don't have wild dog they occasionally do come in onto the property um, from the neighboring reserve but yeah it does require a lot of management so they've got a full-time conservation team there that keeps a, a very close eye on on things <laughs> jimmy james do you think uh, you could do a city type of job i wonder i've been asking myself that question a lot um especially since leaving safari live i considered you know do i go the city route 
and leave the 10 years of experience that I've got in, in the wildlife industry. And I decided to stick with the 10 years of experience and try and keep my foot in the door. I obviously love nature and wildlife and being able to explore, but at the end of the day, you've got to kind of make ends meet. And if uh, you know the current route isn't providing that, it, it may make sense to either try something like what I'm doing now, which hopefully will become successful. But if not, I guess I might be able to get a city job as long as I don't have to wear a suit. I might be able to get a city job as long as I don't have to wear a suit. That would kill me. <laughs> okay. Nilia, you so glad to see the nerd with the muscles again. <laughs> okay, thanks. I'll take that as a compliment. And Ladybird, yes, it is great that I'm doing something that I love. So, really, really enjoying it. And, and I didn't realize how much it would help enhance guests experience when I first started doing it. So I initially thought it would just be the infrared kind of aspects and elements of the drive. But during the day, it provides both the guide and the guests with very unique visuals uh, and tools to be able to kind of take a closer look at things. So guests are really enjoying that. And the happier I can make people out on safari, the better. Okay. But yes, uh, Mary, it is expensive living in a city because there's shops around every corner. Being in the bush, you don't, you're not used to shops. So you find when you go and leave, you'll like leave a gas station with like five bags of food, even though it's not even like the grocery store. Where is one place you've always wanted to visit? Lindsay. Gorillas comes to mind, uh, either in Rwanda or Uganda, either or, as long as I got to see them. But then again, the tigers, the jaguars, the Arctic, the Antarctic. So I'm terrible at making decisions. So not any one spot, and I haven't, I'm not planning on doing any traveling just yet. Dilip, you'd like to know if we're experimenting with drones to film wildlife. At the moment, um, not really. Uh, they just make too much noise, and unless you've got a very fancy one that can fly very high and operate from a decent altitude, it's, it's difficult not to have an impact on the animals. So they're not ideal right now for filming wildlife. Yet they are great tools for filming wildlife, but just not all the time. And if there's no one around, and that's the other thing, you know, on a lot of these reserves, it's not just you, there's other people trying to enjoy their game drive. So you could imagine being stopped looking at a bird and you just hear this wingy and you look up and there's a drone it's not ideal so I tend to be very sensitive with them okay interesting Noel you've lived in the Arctic Circle it's awesome sure what took you there what on earth were you doing in the Arctic Circle Marianne, you'd like to know how does the equipment work during the day? Well, just a quick recap. The camera is mounted on the dashboard, so the cameraman sits in the passenger seat next to the guide, and that mon the camera feeds into three monitors. One on the dashboard that the first row looks at, one on the first row that the second row looks at, and one on the second row that the third row looks at, the second row that the third row looks at. So each row of guests and the guide can see a monitor. And during the day it helps because the cameraman can zoom into a tiny little bird, and the guests who may not all have binoculars or know how to use them don't have to lift a finger they can just look down at the monitor and see how beautiful the bird is and the camera zoom is also about twice as good as your average set of binoculars so it's just an easy way to bring guests closer visuals and that's one thing i immediately realized with safari live i could stop the vehicle and if i was in sync with the cameraman that cameraman could get all of you a visual of whatever we were looking at far quicker than any guide would be able to get all six of his guests to find it with binoculars and that's the perk so we would find i'd find myself stopping for things that if i was a guide with guests on the back i may drive past because i'd be like uh they're not all going to see that blue wax ball it's going to be a nightmare it's not even worth stopping but with the camera when you stop blue wax ball boom psh, nice view huh? i hope that answers the question 
Can you tell us your Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook channels? It's the, my business's name is called Safari Film Crew. So, yeah, Instagram Safari Film Crew and Facebook Safari Film Crew and YouTube. I haven't been very good with posting enough content, but I promise to try and get better. Okay, Noel. So you're working there. Cool in the Arctic Circle. Rosemary, why aren't there more camera women? Good question. Um, there are actually a few, and I've interviewed, well, I, you know, just telephonically spoke to quite a few, but sadly none of them could uh, work the six-week on two-week criteria. And I was hoping to actually employ some girls, um, but not yet. There are a few, though. Um, it's quite a unique job, you know. Finding somebody that's willing to work six weeks on, two weeks off isn't necessarily that easy. Um, so, yeah. But looking for camera woman. Surprise, Safari Live have never had. Did Safari Live never have a female camera, camera woman? No, not officially. Funny that. Anyway, um, what else? Sure, I'm very thirsty. I might have to have a little quick sip of my beer that I was drinking earlier. Hmm. It's called a lion. It's not small. Very nice. Um, I had a stressful day trying to get my rain covers made for all my equipment. Um, so, every, you know, with three monitors and the camera and everything and no roofs on the vehicles, um, I needed to get some rain covers made today. And thankfully, the, the people that did it for me, they were such legends. They continued working until 6 p.m., way long over time in order to get everything done before I leave to Angala tomorrow. Okay. Did, because it was the closest available liquid to me. <laughs> VM, any updates on Brent and his movements, eh? Okay, VM thinks he can hear a Land Rover. My hearing's terrible, so I can't share anything yet. Updates on the fire. It's picking up nicely. Yeah. So, what else, everyone? <laughs> Dalsir, if you said you'd love to work six weeks on, two weeks off. It really is cool. I mean, to have three months worth of two week holidays every year is is an absolute blessing um it does come with its complications because you sometimes miss weddings and stuff like that because you can't get away but yeah having two weeks off to enjoy yourself you can really travel and explore places so yeah lots going lots to do on the two week breaks and by the end of six weeks though you start going crazy and then sometimes you work eight weeks or nine weeks and then you go super crazy <laughs> Have you been stuck in the wild more than 12 hours with no rescue, Dilip? No, I've never really been stuck. I mean, no, I don't think so. There were a few moments in the Mara where I thought we were going to be properly in trouble because we, we would get stuck on the Tanzania border where there would be no cell phone signal. So if we didn't get ourselves out of there, there wasn't another vehicle coming past. So we would have had to spend the night. So remember Manu and I digging furiously carrying rocks backwards and forwards it took us about four or five hours i was stiff for like four days after that it was so hectic but never been stuck for a long period of time dilip no nilia and simon i haven't met sandy bend yet sadly but we've been searching for you and there are some beautiful spots on leadwood the area where uh, we drove through the other day uh, brent said it was was her kind of turf and it was a, a beautiful, beautiful area. So I could just imagine the epic leopard sightings that they have seen and are going to continue to see and share with you guys there. Do you have satellite phones? Um, some places do where there is terrible network, like camps in the middle of nowhere. I've worked at camps where we had satellite phones for emergencies. But for the most part now, there's, there's decent internet in most places. It's just sections of the Mara where it was dead. Mm. 
Noel, how do you account for rain on Safari with these monitors? As, as I was saying a bit earlier, I've got like these little rain covers that I've got made for them. So, yeah. Oh, VM, we're on 10% battery, eh? Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we've got little rain covers, but it's, it's hair raising and something's going to break at some stage. <laughs> Thankfully, I got to test the kind of parameters. I remember one evening with Ferg in the Mara with wildebeest, uh, the musketeers hunting wildebeest in the rain. We got some epic footage. Some of you may remember the shot of the wildebeest coming, running back in and knocking a cheetah off uh, a young wildebeest calf. And the youngsters started running away and three of the musketeers kind of uh, lured the mother uh, wildebeest away, the one that bowled the cheats off, and the other cheats went and smashed the youngster. It was some epic footage, but it it required us to take some chances, and things got a bit wet, um, and I got some slight damage on the monitors. So I got an idea from that evening what the monitors can go through. <laughs> we had to push the envelope that evening. Lindsay, you'd like to know if I've worked in camps where you have to fly everything in like Botswana? Yes. A lot of those camps, they'll bring things in by the road, by road, like, you know, massive resupplies every few months. But a lot of the fresh produce will come in uh, by air. And two parks that I worked in were both in Tanzania, Mahali Mountains National Park at Greystoke Mahali, incredible camp, check it out. And Katavi National Park with also uh, Charter Katavi with a company called Nomad. So I worked at those two camps and they were very remote and I've got some good news. Brent has come with more beer. <laughs> he doesn't know I've got one on the floor over there. I, I don't. Where's the lion? Oh, there it is. I don't think, oh, think the screen flipped. Welcome, Brent. How was your game, Hi, everyone. Drive? Please, it was please can good. you hold the screen? My arm is so sore. So That's why yeah. I didn't do it on a table. Yeah, VM gave me, didn't give me a table. <laughs> VM, evil, evil pet. Guys, I hope you've been um, enjoying your time with Scott. Scott, did you Scott touch me, Scott? Oh, we pulled my chest out! Oh, sorry! <laughs> um, oh, wait, let me try change my hand because this one, my thumb is getting in the way. Okay, here we go. Vim, why do we have a tripod out here? Do we even have one? I don't know, we can make a plan. Back a bit, yeah. um, no, we could, why don't we, we go could, sit on the could, table? We're good, we can squeeze in here. There we go. So Scotty, you've been keeping everyone up to date and up to breast? Yeah, I've actually, it's been a whirlwind. Eh? I've been feeling the pressure actually a little bit. I haven't, uh, yeah, I've been telling people about the weather and all kinds of strange things, but here we are. <laughs> Seems to have been going okay. I also didn't know that you could touch the side of the screen. Oh, to go back. The back. I <laughs> thought nobody was talking to me. So I was like, oh, this is not, this is awkward. There's no uh, why do I know CBO? You want to see my shirt? Whoops. It says Rhino Revolution. Um, which is one of the NGOs that we um, support in this area. Sorry, Scott. Vim, this is very awkward. Trying to do that. Being this close to you, I don't mind you being I'm this like close, but <laughs> holding <laughs> holding it is um, um, is is difficult. Um, yes, yeah, so I had a very pleasant game drive. Um, went and saw the three male lions. Oh, good. We saw some rhinos. Um, the cheetah we couldn't find. She was. The rain stayed away. Which the rain stayed away. Oh. We got a few s spits on us, okay. um, but nothing too, too bad. What was that one there? Uh, Neela and Simon, any update on Sandy Bend? No, but Scott, did you tell them about our wonderful leopard sighting? No, I didn't. I didn't know if I could. Oh, of course you can. <laughs> um, so um, we've been out with Scotty. Obviously, of course, you know his. Here we are. I'm very glad your t-shirts arrived, Fern. Um, and uh, so basically, we, we found a new female, which we've never seen before. Um, very skittish female, very young female uh, in Sandy Bed's territory, feeding on a giraffe that was killed by the male lions. Woohoo! Yes, so um, she snuck in there when the male lions went for a drink, ate as much as she could, and then when the male lions started coming back, she disappeared. Okay. Scott, I'm afraid I'm, I'm overruling Vim here. Is your arm sore already? No. I 25 minutes of that. No, 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 no. We just, it's, just, it's just not practical. Uh, let's make a plan. I've got an idea. Come, we're going. We, come, we, we, we DIY. We're live, live, live broadcasting here. We can just lean it. Can't we just put... Of course, but I'm worried about light there. Uh, There's better light here. So if we... 
come here. There we go. Much better light. And we move our chairs. Uh, just put our chairs in front of this one. And then we'll just sit right close by. Whoopsie. Um, as I say, um, as most of you know, we are waiting for new equipment that we can actually use a proper camera and we don't have to do it off a... Uh, what are you doing, Scott? It's no, we just... Working. It's not working. It's not working. Um, we need a plank to go across. No, it's fine there. It should be fine. We should be able to sit close enough. I'm just... Actually, I'm going to steal Scott's cushion. There we go. Do that. And then let's bring our chairs and then we can sit in front there. There we go. So, sorry, it's been so hectic and so, so, so busy. I apologize for being late, but I'm very thankful for, oof, that's going to get hot next to the fire. I'm sure Scott showed you the fire already. No, it's been growing. It's been a process. It's a process. So, there's the fire. Okay. Uh, Debbie Bucket and BB are doing very, very well. Now, if we sit. Ha ha, Scott Dyson. I'm coming now. There we go, Scott's coming now. Okay, let me come a bit closer so I can see the questions. There we go. Uh, Lindsay the Little Terror is very upset because she's having to sit um, inside while we do the live chat. Um, actually, you know what? That'll. There we go, that fixes the light kind of darkness over my face problem. Let's take my cap off. So there will be some of you, um, our patrons, who've been lucky enough to see the latest live camera. And that is, of course, um, our boss camp camera. Um, so we're still in the stage of testing. So our patrons uh, are getting to view that camera while we're still finishing up stuff. I think we might change the camera. Um, <laughs> All the Safari Love guys look so odd with their, with their hats, yeah, without our hats. Yes, you were used to seeing us with hats for like four years. Um, so yes, there's been some really cool stuff, as you can see, rhinos already. Um, and I heard um, you could hear the male lions roaring. I think there's a good chance that the, the, those, the three male lions will come to Boss Camp later tonight. They weren't too uh, far away. So that's very, very exciting. Noel, I'm, I'm afraid I, I can't help that. It's posted onto Patreon. Um, I don't know how the notification systems uh, work, but as um, soon as we post, you should get a notification. If not, you need to turn on your no 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 notifications in Patreon. Of course, we couldn't post this public um, because it is for our Patreons only for now and the owners of the camp. Is there a male line at the pan? Apparently, the rhinos chased a male lion away from the pan at the, that the, at the new pan. So maybe the lions will come back. Um, that's very exciting. I'll have to go back and look at that footage. Um, where's Taylor? Taylor's actually coming to visit on Friday. So day after tomorrow. So there we go. That's a good start. Uh, the first day of the pan has been live, even though while we're doing testing, the lions and rhino. Um, very, very exciting. So yes, Taylor McCurdy is coming for a visit. We'll probably try to force her to do a live chat with you guys as well. So that could be quite exciting. Fern, the best stuff always happens while I'm asleep. Well, Fern, I think that just happened. Is that right now? Just now. So here we go. VM's showing me. There's a male lion drinking at the pan and there comes the rhino. How cool is that? And apparently there's two rhinos right now. So that is incredible. So um, yes, um, that's great, great for that pan. That pan will be going live um, to everyone shortly. But for the next little while, it is only for our patrons. I'll get them to post the link to Patreon. If you're not a patron, um, uh, you can join us. Um, you get to see lots of cool stuff like that, lots of behind the scenes stuff that we don't put out always onto uh, YouTube itself. Now, before we go too far, there's a lots of stuff um, that has been going on. A lot of questions from you guys about when is the next episode of The Tale of Two Mothers. 
um, and it'll be the last one for this year. And I think VM will confirm it is going to be delayed because we've got a big shoot. Um, oh, well, we're not. We're fixing a shoot for a big British film crew um, that are coming out to shoot a TV advert. So we need, we need, we need uh, to do those jobs. So unfortunately. Um, even though all the footage and stuff has been filmed and ready for the next episode of Tale of Two Mothers, um, we're not going to have time to be in the studio, so to speak, so back at the office working on that. So I, what, what, what is, I, I don't even have my phone here. Uh, what is the date this Sunday? It's not going to be this Sunday, it's going to be the next Sunday because we're going to be busy this whole, whole week um, with um, a British film, a film, film crew. Um, to to get out of or to obviously it's a, a nice little bit of income so with fixing we basically sort out the accommodation transport where we're going to film there we go the crybaby has been released scott has put her on her little on her harness because it's night time and we're outside and there might be a leopard around you never know so vim i said not this sunday the sunday afterwards yes vim is nodding his head that will be the last episode of the tale of two mothers yes hello pup are you very happy now that you're a part of the party yes and i, I don't want kisses you, you're very sad to be she left the out coolest little dog ever yo been having so much fun with her hey she trouble really is a character yeah just chew my hand she really is a little character so she comes and runs in and jumps in on my bed every morning nice and early to wake me up she wants to know screen time, Carla says. Um, she's saying mommy tomorrow. No, she's only going to be saying mommy on Saturday. Sharon, I think you want to know, to know how to pronounce the name. Matlolwa. Matlolwa. Is it Matlolwa? Matlolwa. There's an oh, L-W-A at the end. Oh, I thought it was it's, Wa at the end. No, it's, an, it's a weird one. Matlolwa. Oh, but no one can say your name, so we just call you Chloa. Yes. Because no one can say your name properly. Err. She's such a little cutie. What else is going on here? Let's have a look. Yeah, greetings. Give him a lion. He's already got one. Grumpy old man. Stitch cats. Uh, what, what, would you, what would you say about female camera operators? If they're good enough, they can stay. We, we, do not, we, do, we are definitely not biased. I've worked with some incredible female um, camera operators over the years. Yes, she has trouble. A very busy trouble. Yes, but on this side of the house, um, because it's open, we don't let her wander around at night. So she's either got to be on our laps or attached to the chair that we're sitting on. Um, otherwise, um, she, um, yes, the best ears in the world. Look, you've got the best ears. The best of ears. So, Brent, I'm looking forward to our dinner tonight. We're having some uh, burravos. Who's cooking? I'll cook. Oh, yeah. Simple. Just burravos and rolls. So, it's basically a beef sausage and a roll with tomato sauce. <laughs> and mustard. Simple. Uh, Sarah Wood, any idea who the new leopard is? We don't have... It'll come up now. Uh, we don't have any idea. Um, she looks quite young. Um, I'd say probably no more than about two and a half, three years old. So, maybe a, a leopard looking for territory. And Sandy hasn't been around for a while um, in that area so maybe she's going to try and make a play at claiming some of Sandy Ben's territory but ben I think she wants to call it Pocahontas just saying I did not say <laughs> that at all um, I would never call a leopard Pocahontas uh, <laughs> a lot of you are asking how we've kind of learned from each other and what ideas we're sharing um, it's a good question we kind of you know, both in the same boat, trying to make make things work. Um, Thank you, Vim. And Vim's playing with the there's fire. There's definitely room for collaboration. Um, you know, already uh, both Brent and Vim have been hugely helpful, just having me here and, and spending time helping me with my second rig. And I help where I can. And I guess just by having more people around, you've got more ideas. So even at Boss Camp yesterday, you know, not that I was coming up with any great ideas, but it's just you're just an extra hand and you know, just help out the, the master VM, you just hand VM tools. Basically, that's that all idea as well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, 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 but we also have been plotting and thinking about how, how to improve things. Um, 
VM seems to think he can build us our own infrared lights, which is super exciting. Um, so yeah, just spending time together helps us brainstorm how to kind of fine tune what we're both doing, which is obviously two very different things. And I kind of give Brent and VM a bit of advice in terms of what they're doing and what I like and what I don't like. Um, I think some of their more recent episodes have been super cool. The ones with the funky music, um, it's just so different to your your regular wildlife documentary and, and the footage that they're getting combined with this new twist on how to tell the story I think is is really working well so yeah I think we just maybe help keep one another motivated more than anything I guess. exactly <laughs> and I mean and what Scotty's doing is, is really groundbreaking so even when you're on a safari and you're out there and the lions start hunting the lights go off and you sit there and you listen now that is an incredible experience in itself but now to be able to see what they're doing and for me one of the biggest bonuses um with infrared and, and and infrared cameras possibly in a completely different context to what you are using for it now but it could be used for the situation of animals so with this little female leopard we drove in we had the spotlights on scotty got the leopard in the spotlight which she thought was a large jennet no, i'm only joking i did i was like <laughs> that's a big jennet she was a small leopard and then um she started running away as soon as the light was on it. We, Scotty killed the light immediately. VM swung around with the camera with the infrared light. And in the infrared light, she completely calmed down. We were no more than about 10 meters from her. And she came back and started to feed on that giraffe carcass. So it was actually incredible. And we, we spoke at this level. We didn't, mm. didn't change the way we were talking. It was just that light. You, uh, she was not used to that light. So she's probably come from the area that is not used to game drives. Yeah. The um, 20 minutes that we spent uh, definitely was went amazing. a long way to helping her become more friendly. And she was even seen the next day, during the day, by another vehicle. Interesting. There yeah. we go. So, yeah. Thanks, Brent. Oh. I don't need the kisses on my knee. I'm getting knee kisses. Uh, Debbie, did we know each other before Safari Live? Um, uh, Scott and I did. We actually went to boarding school together. Um, although I was two years above Scott, Scott was in the same class as my brother. Yeah. And it's an interesting story, actually, because I initially... Yes, sir, it's true. I initially went to Londolozi for an interview. That was the first camp I ever went to for an interview. And I had friends that were working there, and I kind of really thought I had the inside scoop. And I arrived at the interview a little bit late, like just in time to get onto the vehicle and head out with the other guide that was on the interview, who was one of Brent's friends called Helen. Oh, so it was a duel, Scott versus Helen. I was in one a difficult job, position. Two of us on the interview. So, and now I am a rookie. I don't know anything about safari. I kind of knew a few birds because I was in the bird watching club at junior school, but like, I didn't know what a buffalo thorn was. I didn't know what trees were what and i was clueless and hen is ex and beyond from medique okay and 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 helen had a bit of a head start anyway she ran over a tortoise on her interview drive and got the job still got the job ahead of me so then i was awfully sad and like now what do i do so brent was like don't worry i'll call my friends at sangita so he kind of organized me the job at Sangita, where I spent three years barring the six months that I got fired for everything <laughs> after I qualified. But we won't go into that story because no. that's another story. Um, so yeah, Brent got me that job. And then I started at Safari Live or whatever it was, six or seven years later. Spence, I don't know how long I was there before you... You, you were in October or whatever when they did that first stuff. Yeah. And I came in February. Okay. But you'd left and then you came yeah. back. So Brent called me and he said, Scott, what's the deal with Safari Live? What's the and story? I was like, buddy, go for it. It's awesome. So it's funny how, you know, not that I organized him the job. No, but the way the world we, works. We've, we've, yeah, and we've followed one another around for, for many years, essentially. Well, Sketch Cats, why have we not been to find a signer? Because it takes some planning. And who said we're not going to, but maybe next year? He needs some time to grow up. Yeah, he, he just... Before he gets his own show. <laughs> before he gets yeah. his own show. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's quite a, if you think about the Safari Live crew as such, a lot, a lot of the guys have known for, mm. well, the, old, the older, the older yeah. lot, the new lot, I don't know no, too much about. No, it's crazy how much uh, we all knew one another. James Henry was my rugby coach. Yes, and when my I brother's rugby coach. Six, my first year of high school, James Henry was a teacher at my school. He's a stooge. Like a stooge. Yeah, a student like teacher. Like a student, yeah, like a gap year teacher. I don't even know how to yeah. describe it. But 
describe it. But he was my rugby coach. And yeah, um, next thing you know. Saw him today after not seeing him for a year, which was really cool. Saw him and Kirsty. Saw Tristan the other night, which was super Carlo, cool. they didn't win any games when James was so, coaching. Yeah, um, yeah, really, really been great catching up with, with guys that I haven't seen. I've been lucky. I've seen quite a lot of Brenton VM um, over the last year. But Tristan no, and James, a lot of guys. We saw Tristy. We had a catch up with Tristy. Yeah, great catch yeah. up. So, no, and Tristy we know from Singita as well, from exactly, way before his fire yeah. dive. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of history. Yeah. And yeah. more to come. More to come. It, it, uh, it's only, it's only going to get better. Um, and I guarantee the, the, the old crew, we, I mean, we, we lived with each other for four years and, um, and a lot of our crew are some of our best friends. So mm. we, we definitely stay in, in contact and, and, and keep, um, keep, keep, keep it in the family, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, Carol, you never know, but at the moment, n probably not. I would love to. I'm just too busy doing my own. Yeah, thing. that's the problem. Um, does my dog have an Instagram? No, it shares an Instagram with me. Poor pup. Thank you, Ladybird. Yeah, guys. So, yeah, as I say, um, I just want to make sure I covered Tale of Two Mothers. Not this Sunday. The next Sunday because we're working with the British film crew next week on a TV outfit. <laughs> which is not something I would say uh, we would do often. It's going to be fun. Oh, check the wolf spider, dude. It's a monster. Oh, we have to show people this. And then you're going to try to catch it. I've got a dog on my lap. I'm just going to... Are you taking the microphone off? Turn it around. Turn the camera around. Turn the camera around. Turn the camera around. Turn the size of that wolf spider. It's a big one. Can you see it? Go down. Keep coming. Oh. Um, yeah, wait. Yeah, just pass it. I'll, I'll turn the camera around. Okay. It's going to be much easier. No, baby, don't chase the spider. You can put your hand next to it, buddy. There you go. That's a nice wolf spider. Oh, he ran away. And onto my foot. There you go. That was cool. Uh, outside. I think it's outside. Yes. Um, and they're playing a great song. Oh, oh the camera needs to turn around again. There we go. Oh. Oh hey guys, you must be scared of spiders. I love spiders. I got some really beautiful big baboon spiders that live in my garden as well. <laughs> Don't worry, Hyper Welsh. The spider's on our side. You can't get to you. Uh, white Rhino, we're not using a cell phone. We're using a tablet, um, an iPad. But we are going to be, um, we've, we, we're ordering equipment from um, China that will enable us to then live stream off our little handheld um, 4K camera. Um, yes, that is a frog calling. So Critter Cam um, is just behind us. And um, that's in my garden, Critter Cam. So all those in Yala and Warthogs and stuff, they come out into my back garden. You sneeze, baby. It's VM's fire. It's VM's fire. I actually saw some snakes today, Michelle. Um, I saw. I can't wait for snakes. I'd meet you. I have so snakes. Um, I had a brief view of a black mamba disappearing at high speed, and I saw Puffy. Puffy. Guys, do yourselves a favor. There's a guy in Durban called Nick Evans. K Z N. Nick Evans. K Z N. Follow him on Instagram. Floppy dog. He goes, he's basically the guy, well, one of a few guys that people call when snakes need to be taken out of houses. And the amount of black mambas that this guy's taking out of houses daily well done, trick. is incredible. So um, definitely a guy we're following on Instagram. He's doing really great work and he, he goes about catching the snakes very ethically and gently and he's a guy doing lots of great work and he's got a super interesting Instagram feed. And even search him on YouTube videos. He does some gnarly, gnarly stuff. Misty Stokes, how dangerous can a snake be when you're on a safari? Not dangerous at all. Um, unless it's in your bed. Unless it's in your bed, which doesn't happen yeah, very often. And, and I have a, a, a Scottish there, mm. please, Scottish. Um, so uh, most snakes are far more scared um, of you than you are of them. 
Um, and so generally, generally snakes, uh, when you have a problem with snakes, Excuse is me from the table. Oh, is, be back. is in and around, particularly kitchens um, and places like uh, where the rubbish is stored because it attracts rats. Um, and a lot of snakes' favorite food is rats. The other places where there's little swamps and stuff like that, like around um, water holes and whatnot, where they're frogs, because uh, probably the most com common venomous snake we encounter living out here is the Mozambique spitting cobra. Um, Scottish? <laughs>